Hey everybody. Okay, so what kind of filmmaker can pull off a kind of sci-fi vibe in Cuba? We are about to find out. I am Lauren Delisa Coleman, bringing you another episode of the Inside Series during the Sundance Film Festival for our wonderful platform, film.io. And I'm so excited to welcome to the show, Jose Luis Aparicio, who is coming to us from Cuba. And Jose, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me to this wonderful um, um, platform. Yeah, I'm very pleased to hear. Our pleasure. So you have this hot film in Sundance called Tundra. And um, I would love for you to be able to tell our viewers who watch the Inside series what it's all about. Tundra is a, it's a short film that mixes uh, various genres. It mixes neo-noir, horror, fantasy, and science fiction. It is a, a film about a man searching for a woman in a dystopian landscape. Uh, he, he's, he's not sure if uh, the woman is, exists or of this uh, product of his imagination. So that's like a very mysterious, uh, ambiguous uh, uh, film. And, and that's uh, basically it, but there are a lot of uh, weird characters and, and weird situations in the middle. Yeah, and it also just looks very cool too. I don't want to give too much away about the, the kind of serpent within this, but anyway. But this is, you know, very deep on a number of different levels, right? So I would love for you to be able to, to speak to that if you could, um, you know, in my research a bit about this, you know, I was just very um, drawn to the idea of like this being about maybe frustrated, frustrated desires and how that reflects some of the situation of the mindset and, you know, kind of psychology um, in Cuba. So could you you delve um, into that a little bit for us? Because I think, you know, many people have at least whatever sense our media gives us of the situation in Cuba, but not really from a creative point of view like you've you've done here. So could you, you talk a little bit about that, please? Yeah. Um... We live in a totalitarian country uh, uh, for the last 60 years. Cuba is a, 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 a communist state, but it's more like a capitalist state, a state capitalism. Uh, and they say they are communists, but that's not really the case. They just uh, exploit people for their advantage. So it's a very repressive atmosphere for, for Cubans. There is not freedom of speech. There is not uh, artistic freedom. Uh, censorship has been very common in the in the history of of Cuban art in the past uh, 60 years. So every individual in Cuba, since uh, since childhood, uh, faces this kind of uh, repressive environment. So it's very common for us to just uh, keep our desires um, uh, to ourselves. Uh, there is not uh, a lot of possibilities in Cuba to fulfill your dreams. So or to be really the person uh, you, you want to be. So people need to, to just uh, sim simulate a, a kind of um, a character for the government, because uh, if you really talk uh, with freedom, if you really say uh, what's on your mind, you can really get in trouble. So I wanted to approach that from a very symbolic point of view. Um, I don't want it uh, uh, to be like a, a direct confrontation. I want it to be uh, like um, a more uh, of an exploration of um, uh, uh, how a repressed individual turns. Uh, um, that's why my character is state. He, he is not capable of fulfilling his desire. So uh, the city uh, gets infected by these monsters and this like very dense, uh, grotesque atmosphere is like uh, you, you try to keep your monsters to yourself, but they, they come out anyway. And, and that's what I wanted to to portray in uh, in the in the film, the uh, like uh, an environment, the country that is uh, like um, very uh, mediated by these uh, repressed uh, desires and. Uh, it's like the the, the, the the quote from from Goya the the um, the dream of the reason creates monsters so that's that's kind of my my vision of a totalitarian dystopian uh, present day Cuba it's just you know such a shame and I think it's even more of a shame if I could say that 
like what you're talking about now is being talked about though, but around the world, right? And so there were just certain countries, um, you know, in the world where this was just you know, I mean, horrible. And now we're starting to see a lot more discussion about which directions different countries are, are taking and why, you know, after the pandemic and a, a lot of debate and a lot of, uh, you know, waking up about this. So I think your, your film is coming at a very, a very intriguing time. Um, tell me about how um, you, you kind of pulled your team together there in uh, Cuba, and how long did it take to, you know, actually be able to, to, to create this whole project? You know, you got the idea, and I'm sure it had been rolling around like most ideas for a little while, um, and then you say, okay, like, I'm going to start to, like, make a, a move on this. From that moment to, you know, the film being completed, was it a while? Was it pretty quick? How did it go for you guys? Yeah, we were, like, um, in a three-year process uh, of making this film because okay. it's very difficult uh, to make independent films in Cuba until a couple of years ago, it wasn't even legal to make, to make independent films or to have independent film companies. You just operated like outside the law, but uh, it, it's very difficult to get financing uh, in, in, in that way. So we were like, uh, we did a crowdfunding uh, like two or three years ago, and we searched for a little bit of money uh, in some independent institutions like uh, foreign countries, embassies that that give money to, to Cuban independent cinema because there wasn't like a state funding in, in that moment for, for this kind of film. Um, and we just, uh, uh, we were ready to shoot and the pandemic came. So we need to, we needed to hold, to hold the production for, for almost a year before we could take like a, a, a brief window of time uh, uh, in which uh, it was safe to shoot. Uh, so we were like in a very long process for making a short film, which is not that long uh, when you get to the shooting, uh, like three or four years. And um, after the shooting, it was like a long post-production because we have so many special effects. And, right, and they, right. But it's yeah, totally but, worth it because the special effects look really hot, you guys. Um, yeah, but I could imagine yeah. that takes a while. Yeah, and it was all made like in, in a very uh, artisan way because the special effects were not made like a, like a big, com big company of special effects. They were made in a house by two or three people that work independently too. So it all, it all was like the, the talent and, the, and the, the energy of Cuban young filmmakers that just want to, to create new new ways of telling stories about Cuba uh, with new uh, aesthetics and and it was like a very difficult process but very enjoyable as, as well so well Jose obviously you had to keep um, you know your your spirits up and to really continue to believe in the project with all of that um, what kind of technique do you have um, just personally to be able to to persevere given you know, you've already discussed about, you know, the culture there, um, the environment, and then being able to bring together a creative project, which is never really easy, right? Like giving birth and all that. What What's your personal, like, kind of secret? I'm always just um, curious about that with different filmmakers. Well, um, I just need to be uh, drawn to the to the story I'm telling. I need that, uh, that the story, the film I'm making uh, is a mystery. And not just to the spectator, but but to me too. So that's like my process. I get into a film knowing some stuff about it, but also like discovering other other things uh, as I go along. So that's like a, uh, that's my process. Uh, it's just very intuitive. So I'm I'm going with my team like uh, like unraveling uh, different aspects of the production, and it's it's. I want to be surprised uh, by the film I'm making. So that's why mystery and ambiguity are very important. Uh, I was saying that uh, I don't have a particular process, but that, that part of the mystery is very important for me. I, I don't want to uh, like get in a specific framework of this is how I do movies. I, like, uh, I think every film is different and, and every film has uh, its particular uh, process. Uh, but that's like the discovery of the film as I go along is, is like very important. I need to to like get uh, new some new details 
in every step of the process uh, to get to to continue to to be like uh, connected with the uh, with the mystery of, of my thumb i love uh, the way you're putting that and i think it's like such great advice especially for like a type a personality like me um although i don't think you can be type a and be you know a filmmaker as you need to be you know for the long haul but um you know just the idea i mean obviously there's that you know cliche about it's not about the destination it's about the journey and you're like yeah whatever but i'm i'm really interested in the destination but i think the way that you've put it about like that it's a mystery and you're um intrigued by just the unfolding of it and seeing how that is and being like a partner in that that's like a kind of cool way to approach things i mean like i know I know that that's obviously right, but somehow when you get, you know, just caught up in whatever it is you want to do and you're so passionate and you can see the actual result and you can see people's response to the result, it's very hard to just be like, well, you know, today is another day like kind of toward that. You want to just grasp that actual moment. But um, if it's approached as like a mystery, I love that idea. Like that's really that's really hot. I like that. I hope you guys do do too. So this is a good kind of segue um, into like my next question because I was wondering about this as well. So this kind of all comes together. You said until a couple of years ago, um, independent filmmaking was actually illegal in, in, in Cuba. What changed that? And what do you see now as being maybe the, the near term future of filmmaking in, in your country? Well, um uh, first what changed that uh, landscape uh, where uh, film like independent film uh, was not legal uh, was the the, the independent films uh, itself because um we were operating outside the law but we were getting some amazing results like the 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 most important and more, and more prestigious cuban films in the last 20 years are independent films our films ah so it, what it kind of almost had to force their hand to be like okay yeah, it's yeah. not illegal because now this actually makes us look good like we have citizens who are so creative you know getting awards yeah. was that the idea or yeah. what yeah it's, it's part of the idea but not just that because even with that they didn't want to open that possibility so we need to like filmmakers uh, turn in, into activists and we were like championing uh, like like film laws and and some like uh, official uh, statements of, on the matter and uh, it took a lot of years like maybe 10 or more years uh, until some of these laws were passed they are not still like the the perfect uh, um, laws but now we have uh, more possibilities than than before but we are still facing a, a lot of the state uh, censorship when we tackle some of the political issues. So uh, now we, we have like uh, legal uh, ways of making the film, but still the, the subjects of the film are under a lot of a scrutiny uh, by, the, by the state. So- That's just uh, amazing. I, so how, yeah. how would they, they, they find that out though? Like, I mean, are they that tapped in to like, while you're in production, like somehow being able to know what the, the topics are? Or do you actually have to submit scripts somewhere for yeah. approval or what's the story? You need to submit the films or the projects in order to get uh, uh, some funding or to get uh, even like the, the like the film permits uh, uh, to shoot. If ah, you want to shoot on the okay. street or outside. You have to show what the story is about yeah. even to get the permit to shoot on XYZ Street or whatever. Yeah, and wow. the films, the, all of the venues, the, 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 the physical screenings, uh, they are all uh, in the hands of the state. They control all the, all the cinemas in the country. So distribution is another big problem because you can make your film even like in a very uh, um, a hidden way. You, you can like make your film, but after that, you cannot show the film if they don't want you to show it. Uh, I had a documentary before this, uh, b before Tundra, that was censored uh, by the state, and I wasn't allowed to premiere in in a, in a Cuban film festival because they didn't, they, they, they were not in, in agreement with with the way the documentary tackled some of the history, uh, recent history of the country. So it's like a very um, very uh, difficult uh, landscape for contemporary yeah. independent film filmmaking, but we are still. Uh, like making our films in whatever way is possible and and we're getting some great results and entering in, in big film festivals. So 
Uh, I, I think the near future is about that, about uh, continuing that streak of uh, winning streak of Cuban independence in cinema and uh, not getting uh, put down by the state. We, we just need to be brave and, and resist. I think. Wow, Jose is not a joke, huh? I mean, it really, you know, it's like, it's like everybody has hurdles with their projects, but you know, yours are like times 10, right? Because you are really doing two things at once. Like you said, being an activist and a filmmaker, um, not necessarily by choice, right? Uh, at least of the former. <laughs> the latter is a choice, not the former. Crazy. Yeah. So it's all the more, you know, just miraculous and mad congratulations to be included in this year's Sundance. So what do you think about all that? And um, what's that feel like for you? Well, it's really amazing to be on Sundance. It's, it, it's, it's like a cliche, but it's really a dream come true. We we send the film and and we we hope for the best, but it was like to have the possibility, but we we we, we were not really sure that we'll get in. And when we got the 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 email, it was just mind blowing. Uh, we we couldn't believe it. So it's really a great opportunity for 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 not, not just for the film, but uh, for our future future careers and for Q and cinema. Uh, uh, in general, and it has been amazing. Like the kind of exposure a, 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 a festival like Sundance gets you, like a lot of attention from film companies and representation and other festivals and streamers. It's, it's awesome and it's very new to us too because we were not accustomed to this. Uh, it's, it's like a, these industry links are new to us oh, because okay. there is not yes. a lot. Yes. There is not a film industry in Cuba like a very uh, there is not like a working uh, or successful uh, film industry. There is like a fake film industry. Right. <laughs> so um, it's it's really great, and I I thank some, uh, Sundance so much for this uh, opportunity, and and I hope everybody uh, I I hope a lot of people will see the film and, and like it. That's I, I so hope cool, so. Jose. Just so very cool. I just wish you the very best. Um, what do you have coming up? Have you started like you know any other projects just yet? Are you in pre-production with anything, or even maybe even in production with something? I don't know. Or planning your next activist moves? I don't know. Yeah, I, I'm. Uh, I have a lot of projects uh, all the time. Uh, I have so so much ideas, but uh, in in this particular time, I'm I'm preparing uh, my next two films. I they are they are going to be feature films. Uh, I hope they 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 will get made someday. And I, I, I want to continue working in this kind of like uh, utter approximation to, to genre cinema. I want to, I, I have like a, like a film I want to do, it's called Ismael. And it's kind of a, a, a Western neo-noir set in, in rural uh, Cuba. And it's like a coming of age film uh, about a teenage, um, uh, a teenage man that needs to save like uh, his his love, his purity, uh, 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 against a backdrop of um, a very violent and masculine world. Mm -hmm. So I want to 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 make that film. I, hopefully, in the in the next two years, I, I will get it made, and I think Sundance will is helping a lot in getting also attention for for my next uh, projects so i'm working on that well best of luck jose for sure so now how can we all continue to follow you stay updated on your work and all that i mean it's like you do have access to show, social media and all that i mean in a, i guess in a way <laughs> right yeah so what's the best way yeah. to, to connect with you well, you can uh, look me up uh, on the social media, Instagram uh, or, or Facebook. I, 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 I think uh, I'm like Jose Luis Aparicio Ferrera on Instagram. I post some of, um, uh, of the news of my work there. Jose, I can't thank you enough for taking the time there. I wish you, you know, all the best with your career, um, all the best for making change um, in Cuba. It's just, you know, I mean, Ama just amazing to to hear what happens but then also you know the triumph over it right because you, you can't get stuck in that part you got to like look at the other and I'm just you know so glad um, one of our earliest interviews that we did we started this whole series 
um, back during the Tribeca Film Festival 2021. And one of the first interviews that we did was with a filmmaker who is working with Blondie um, doing a, a short music documentary in Havana. So, you know, it was interesting to yeah. kind of just hit, get, you know, the, the American perspective on Cuba the filmmaking there and then now to be able to talk with you, you know, on the other side. So, you know, things things are happening, but it's just a matter of pushing. I, I so, wasn't that concerned. That's crazy that you were there. So very, very interesting. Well, again, yeah. thank you so much, Jose. I, hope I wanted to thank you so much for, for inviting me today for this interview. Our absolute pleasure. Continued yeah, success, you. Jose. You guys, thank if you. you think this was hot, wait till you see the next interview. Don't go anywhere. Definitely click. As always, I am Lauren Delisa Coleman for the Inside Series right here at Film.io. Thank you for watching.